very good morning to all of you on behalf of the IEIA Indian Exhibition Industry Association it is my honor and privilege to stage the third part of the webinar series and fifth in the session today so i hope all are feeling very enlightened after last evening i'm sure you all lighted uh, some lamps and uh, i can see a lot of smiles and i think that is something which we require in these days of uncertainty so ladies and gentlemen any big change uh, demands a shift in perspective a moment when our everyday point of view is turned upside down and we just try to find out a new way to approach a challenge and getting to that shift requires some disruption of the predictable flow of life and events and the crisis which has been caused by covid first of all and first and foremost has to be seen in more in humanitarian way the lives lost isolation and fear worsening unemployment and the economic precarity but it is also a moment as our prime minister also said for reflection on the future who do we want to be when we emerge from the worst of this and most important what do we want our organizations to stand for post this period so keeping all these factors observations and questions in mind we will today discuss and try Uh, to which the indian exhibition industry has been disrupted by the covid pandemic and this time from the perspective of the service providers i rather say the pillars of the exhibition industry the exhibition ecosystem without them there are no exhibitions and without them we cannot hold exhibitions so i would say these are the pillars and we have with us today a very impressive lineup of industry veterans who have actually witnessed and braved many storms and i think their collective experience and wisdom will come extremely handy especially when we are trying to navigate our ways uh, in the future so our esteemed panelists are very well known figures not just in india i think also globally uh, i would start with mr sunil more who is president isa and the md fair act mr more has also been very actively involved in producing one of the finest exhibitions of the country elekrama while he was heading ema the indian electrical electronic manufacturers association so he has a very great uh, perspective to offer from not just uh, the service providers or the service partners or the pillars but also from organizing exhibitions welcome mr more then i we have mr uh, ravinder sethi our dear international ambassador ieia and also chairman and md of ari rogers who has been representing india uh, globally at various global events uh, representing keeping the flag of india up and actually interacting i'm even wondering how is he staying home you know the international ambassador it's going to be a very difficult task for him to be staying home but anyhow we are happy to have you uh mr b uh, mr ravindra sethi who will also present today the perspective of the freight forwarders and the logistics industry then uh, i have our dear friend mr nanu binu uh, founder director meroform who has been in this exhibition industry you said for 40 years mr binu i don't think so you're that old but anyhow so i so welcome uh, mr binu and then we have mr dharampal singh malhotra executive director namhari event and promotion also eciiia ec member ieia and also isa and last but not the least very honored and privileged to have uh, uh, to make it convenient also mr subhash goyal who is uh, chairman stick travels and also honorary Sec secretary of state uh, mr goyal is a very well known figure in the travel and tourism industry he's done great work uh, over the past years and i think it is our uh, 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 great honor that we have him today especially to present the perspective from the travel and tourism industry so ladies and gentlemen if we do not sustain the exhibition ecosystem of all players that together create the best marketplace and most important events and major occasions for people to meet we will lose much more than the business of just a few months i mean it's more to it so my first question will go to all the panelists 
starting with Mr. Morey and uh, then a brief perspective from their specific industry from each of the panelists. So the question is, what are the, some of the factors according to you which will keep the theater industry running? And how do you think we as an industry have handled the challenge so far in India and what should be our roadmap for the future? So Mr. Morey, uh, please start and set the tone of this webinar today. Thank you very much, sir. Very good morning to all of the participants today. And uh, thanks IEIA for these uh, enlightening seminars which are being held. Uh, the opening batsman has a task to perform. And so Sonia Ji has, uh, I'm not very, very clear in uh, my thoughts uh, when I start the proceedings, but uh, we are all in the same uh, ship at the moment uncertain of uh, what is going to happen. And we are debating at various uh, fora and various levels what uh, we'll be doing. But let me first start on a positive note so that all uh, uh, have some positivity in their mind when we discuss further. Uh, we were contacted through Sudip Sarkar of uh, India Expo Mart that, Delhi, uh, that UP police required uh, some support from exhibition industry and at present we are building 55 pagodas for the policemen who are operating on the Delhi border uh, on the UP side. So this, this work is being done right now. So this is a very, very positive uh, uh, step taken by the exhibition industry and uh, we are also discussing with uh, the ministries, we went through MOCI and then finally to health ministry, uh, which wanted us to inform them what are the inventories we have. And uh, we have given them city-wise inventories of hangers and shell scheme. So in, in unlikely and uh, God forbid an event where the COVID uh, spreads exponentially, there is a facility which can be created in two hour, two uh, days to three days. So that, that's the positive side of uh, what we have done so far to fight the pandemic. Do you want me to specifically say something about uh, the industry, Sonia Ji? Uh, yes, maybe you can talk about your perspective from ISA. Uh... The service providers, as you all know, are the last uh, point of the supply chain and which gets hit first and gets out of the problems at the end. Uh, what we are looking forward, apart from all the activities which are being done uh, and what government has already taken initiatives, three things which come to my mind as ISA president. One is that if government can come forward and give impetus to the sector whenever it comes out uh, of this pandemic, uh, by giving some SOPs on uh, loan-free or uh, interest-free loans to members, particularly the SME sector, which is going to be hit very hard because of the cash flow problems. Second part is that a lot of uh, uh, money is uh, pending with the, particularly with the government uh, organizers, the departments who, whose work we have already completed. Uh, but payments have not been done. So if that pay, those payments, at least government uh, instructs all the departments to clear these service providers will have a little bit more ease on their cash flow, cash flow to uh, tide over these five to six months. Because as your webinars have explained, the, the next four or five to six months are going to be very, very difficult for all of us. And we need to do it together cooperating each other and what best uh, we can do. Thank you, Mr. More. I give it now to Mr. Sethi, who has also been uh, working with a lot of government departments very closely and has also got an international perspective. So Mr. Sethi, what do you think? Have you uh, handled the challenge uh, so far and what would be the roadmap for future from your point of view and from the logistics and freight forwarders point of view? 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sonia. Uh, first of all, as as all of you or many of you know, I am an optimist. But uh, I'm and today I can very safely say not only an optimist but a realist, a realistic optimist. So we will overcome it, and this is not me talking. This is United Nations economist, everybody, WHO. So with that in mind, we will overcome it. I'll answer your your question. This challenge came about us over a period of time, but none of us really knew how to handle it. But by the time we really got to know how to handle it, they were, we were lucky that at least we had government to direct us. And of course, we had our own industry. There was a lot of cooperation for some months now as to handle the challenge. Uh, before we went out externally, it was very important to, to start internally. And the first thing we had to do as forwarders internally was to make sure that that our staff, our colleagues, our immediate partners were safe, secure, and were there with a high morale. So that was started immediately. That was the internal move which took place. Externally and for our stakeholders, for those specific shows which got postponed, what the forwarding industry, the fraternity did was that they immediately offered free storage for all exhibition goods, which were to be held back for a future date. And I must say that all of us in the forwarding industry did that. And that gave a confidence to the organizers that look, you know, they are there with us, they're there with the exhibitors. Number two, we also started paying our vendors on time. This is all the forwarders. We had to install a sense of confidence that we are not going to hide behind the fact that you know there is a there is a problem there's a cash flow problem and the forwarding fraternity in india did that the vendors were given that confidence once the vendors were given that confidence they knew that yes you know we are a serious lot and we will not let them down we will cooperate with them lastly i think I am I'm aware that a lot of us in the forwarding in the forwarding fraternity are offering and giving logistic supports to government for their relief efforts out of passion and from our heart. So these are the few things which have been done by us on an immediate basis to to address this challenge. Thank you, Sonia. I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. Okay. I think I'm um, uh, probably did think that I talk a lot, even though I'm the moderator today. They unmute, they unmute me all the time. But anyhow, that's just the mirror. So thank you very much, Mr. Sethi, for giving us a perspective. I give it now to Mr. Goyal uh, to present the perspective from the travel and tourism industry, which has been also very seriously affected, and it is also one of a very strong pillars of the exhibition industry. I mean, you are the ones who facilitate that our visitors and exhibitors are taken care of. I mean, they arrive at the, um, the marketplaces which we create. So over to you, Mr. Goyal. Ravinder ji, I'm not uh, as overconfident as you are because, uh, you know, as far as the cargo industry and the freight forwarding industry is concerned, I know whatever you're doing, you're doing with a lot of passion. But at the same time, at least... Uh, cargo flights and some relief flights are there. As far as uh, the uh, tourism and travel industry is concerned, uh, there is a big problem, but I'm sure we'll come out of it. It's always the darkest before dawn and every dark cloud has a silver lining. I believe in that. Uh, what uh, as faith as uh, the Federation of Associations and Tourism and Hospitality we've done and we are still in the process of doing Concerning the uh, uh, mice and the uh, exhibition industry, uh, one is uh, that uh, we uh, requested all the hoteliers through FHRI and through Hotel Association of India not to hold, uh, you know, uh, any cancellation charges or anything. Uh, try to give the complete refund if they cannot give give a credit note to be utilized for the future. The airlines have not done this. The reason the airlines have not done this is probably they are saying that we are also suffering. But what we are trying to tell the airlines and uh, 
uh, is that uh, give a credit note. Now, for example, if a medical conference is taking place, that conference will not take place. And if a few lakh rupees are stuck with the airlines, uh, they cannot uh, give a credit note in the name of those passengers because those passengers will never come. So what they should do is they should give the credit notes in the name of the companies, ITA companies who have paid that money in advance. Because what uh, the uh, exhibition organizers or conference organizers are suffering is one, the money is stuck with the airlines, hotels at least we will be able to give them a relief. And then the organizers, which are either government institutions or anyone, they're not paying them. So they're sandwiched in between. So I think uh, there is a crisis and uh, we need to use all the resources at our command to, uh, you know, get relief, get immediate relief to the people because uh, uh, the big organizations uh, or international organizations have deep pockets. But I'm talking about the small and the medium operator, whether he's a tour operator, whether he's a travel agent, whether he's a exhibition organizer, whether he's a event organizer, you see, uh, they have to pay salaries, they have to pay EMIs, they have to pay rents, and they have to pay interest to the banks. So what is uh, urgently needed? And uh, we have been telling uh, regularly sending, uh, you know, tutors to the PMO, to the finance minister, to the commerce minister, to even the tourism ministry, and even the civil aviation ministry, that please, uh, these are SOS conditions. It's not uh, like other crises we've overcome, we've overcome SARS, we've overcome so many other situations. But this is like the third world war. And uh, you know, uh, it is a war situation, worse than a war, because uh, nothing is moving. All incoming money has come to a grinding halt. As far as uh, the uh, freight forwarders and the exhibition industry is concerned, you people are still better off because I'm sure uh, virtual exhibitions and virtual conferences will take place. And in the future, uh, what we used to see on Star Trek, instead of using airlines, people will use, uh, you know, beam me up Scotty and, you know, individuals will be beamed up and there'll be virtual conferences. I mean, that's definitely going to happen in the future. And our friend from Germany will bear with me. I think you guys must already be working on that. But uh, I always believe that, yes, we should overcome. And uh, we have uh, been uh, having regularly uh, conferences with our top management since we have offices all over India. And our top management is trying to speak to all the you know, uh, lowest uh, worker to keep the morale high and uh, to see to it that uh, we shall all overcome. And uh, I still believe that all of you in this industry are very tough. And it is rightly said, when the going to get tough, the tough get going. So we have a lot of challenges in front of us, but uh, how these challenges can be converted into opportunities, only time will tell. But right now we pray <clears throat> that uh, uh, our government uh, and our industry is working together that uh, soon the whole world will be able to find a solution. And I'm sure the exhibition or the conference industry will organize a COVID-19 medical conference where all the doctors from all over the world and research laboratories from all over the world will put their heads together and find a solution uh, and find a vaccine for this problem. Because this is a global crisis and each country is trying to come out of it. But the uh, silver lining on the horizon is that countries like China have uh, already seen the peak and uh, they have started recovering. Korea has started recovering and uh, some other countries have also. And in India, uh, the good point is or whatever uh, you know, hope is that uh, more people are getting cured because of their immune system and because of whatever, uh, you know, isolation and uh, they're able to do, then the number of people who are dying. So let us uh, be positive about this. As uh, Setiji said, that uh, let us all be positive. 
let's not uh, keep looking at the number of uh, you know cases which are increasing because it's not a cricket match that we are w- watching the score let us all look at positive news and let us try to upgrade our skills like you people are doing having these webinars so that uh, uh, we are able to catch up uh, with our uh, knowledge and the skills which we were not able to do i think uh, that's all i want to say and i think uh, all the best <laughs> in this hour of crisis thank you mr goyal thank you very much i am not saying that virtual exhibitions are uh, not going to be the future but uh, we also still believe that the trade fairs and exhibition industry is the biggest enabler of face to face contact if that right. not had been the case then the exhibition uh, venue owners would have not increased their capacities i mean the fact that they are every day adding more square meters to their venue capacities which means india is still in demand india has still got the requirement of these people connecting we are a large country so virtual exhibition will be an additional tool to market our products and uh, we still believe that we can still have face to face connections so i uh, thank you very much for your feedback i uh, really appreciate it. i give it now to mr nanu binu to give his perspectives from the stand construction stand fabricator special events industry team mr binu over to you uh, thank you sonia um uh, we cannot uh, isolate service providers or stand building companies from the other two branches of the exhibition industry namely the venue owners and organizers you know it's like a three legged chair or a stool and we can exist we cannot exist without uh, one another so you cannot simply exist with providers uh, another category uh, let me start with uh, uh, or in expand what mr morey said uh, isa has already uh, informed government what it can do for the government uh, we ha- we have created a uh, website uh, not whatever website but whatsapp group we have assessed how much tents air condition air conditioning uh, equipment system is available in the country and we estimated it's something like 2.5 lakh square meter of uh, tents can be built uh, more that systems can be used for creating rooms in the exhibition venues etc so we have already given a list who is available in each city and how much can be provided i think that's a very positive thing that we have done um i am also attending many webinars you know there is uh, another one going to be tomorrow uh, sometimes i think it's uh, too early in the day maybe we'll take we should take this as the you know one of the webinars we should continue doing it because you know we are facing a uh, um in a pandemic which we have never seen um so so fast goel talked about uh, china but uh, as far as i am concerned i don't trust the, those uh, numbers because you know when you look at the other numbers it seems you know unbelievable you know uh, it started there nobody knew how it is happening what is airborne or you know particle born nobody knew and still the death rates are so low you know so i i don't think you know we cannot uh, create an empirical formula or you know projection using those numbers so it may be uh, more difficult than that um as far as uh, exhibitions are concerned and uh, concerned i think you know what sonia said is correct exhibitions will continue we need interaction you know i was talking to my daughter i also asked her you know, as i uh, because she is also in the field of exhibitions in another country will it go to digital in the future and uh, she said no 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 it will not go we are cocooned in our house for 3 uh, weeks or so 21 days already there in canada and she said it is the first the first thing i want to do to do when, whenever it is over to go and shake hands with uh, somebody i think that spirit you know that us to meet or us to talk to face will drive the industry for many more days to come uh, that's uh, my uh, outlook about uh, the pandemic and uh, how it is going on uh as far as our industry is concerned i is, uh, i see a blip maybe you know for 6 months or 7 months we are not seeing any income so half years income is gone maybe you know we'll have some income for 42 uh, uh, four to 5 months or something 
but that will be, I think those exhibitions will also be truncated if you are expecting in you know, a one lakh square meter of uh, um, participation or if we had one lakh square meter of participation this year next year i would say that it may be 60 or 70000 square meter so in those four months or five months also i expect there will be a fall of 40 to 50 percent in revenues so most of the companies will end up in loss and cash flow will be an extremely big problem government has not given any uh, any kind of help so far whatever has been uh, uh, said in the tv uh, is not reaching anywhere a one percent uh, drop or point seven percent drop in the interest rate does not mean much to us so we hope that uh, government will come forward and do a little bit while saying so you know i am also aware that the government is also in a very difficult situation i don't know how much is their coffers whether they will be able to give because you know the first priority is human lives they will try to save it you know so the lot of money will be going into medical equipment import of equipment etc etc so i don't know how much money will they will they have so i, I don't know how much uh, help from government will come we will have to stand on our feet at this point of time maybe you know what uh, uh, mr kennedy said during his time that it's a time that you know <clears throat> we have to think what we can do for the country and not wondering what one uh, a country can do for us so we should be prepared for a long haul you know but it will also pass humankind has always won there were wars there were uh, 100 years back there was uh, uh, spanish flu when the medical uh, technology was not advanced but man overcame that so i am hopeful that eventually we will uh, overcome that and uh, i will conclude with uh, <coughs> something mr mr uh, the german uh, mr mathias sitting somewhere hum honge kamyab you know there is no doubt to it thank you thank you mr beenu dharam uh, last closing remarks from the uh, stand contractors perspective word again i mean we are partners or we all produce together exhibitions so if the exhibition industry in general is affected of course uh, uh, what is the stand how are you going to cope with it thank you sonia ji uh, see as a stand contractors point of view what i'd like to say we are the uh, kind of the last people in the supply chain you know unless the money comes in to the organizers and then it comes to the venue owners and the exhibition uh, stand contractors uh it's really a challenging time that we have uh, going on because already the first month has started and the salaries have started to go on and this is going to get piled up month after month and there's no hope that we can see as of now that when we we start getting the new set of payments although the existing set of payments which are held up are all held up because of the lockdown all the companies are saying that the payment will start to flow only once the lockdown is over and over the cash flow will not start so we get the payment and our workers who are here and because they are the ones who are sitting idle and as per the guidelines we you know can't even shell or they can't even think of shelling shelling the staff that we have because at a later stage it's you know the already people have started uh, you making benefit of the situation and seeing that you know the, they are looking for this opportunity you know that a kind of good work leaves an associate uh, company and the other people already ready to take it people have also started to think this as an opportunity very disturbing but yes this has already started there is more than you know as the figures are rightly shared by you the more than uh, two two lakh plus staff is, you know the labor and once this lockdown is over rather than supporting us everybody wishes to go back to their hometown and be with their family first and come back to us so this is going to be a challenging time for us the moment we you know even if the exhibition start there will be a pile up because the number of dates available with the venue for the same kind of event probably in august is what we are assuming as of now if we have got capacity of handling two shows or three shows we might have five shows who are regular with us so handling those shows will also be a challenge recurring shows will come up so there's a lot of challenge that we are seeing now 
that uh, can come up right now. Same case would be what we have uh, done basically almost from last six months onto that we have started. We have started utilizing the resources of uh, people who are there in the industry along with us. We started sharing our businesses with them. So luckily, this is the time that you know we can say that you know we can coexist with our partners rather than being competitors. We take their support and you know we support each other at this hard times so that this kind of situation is there we will be able to flow as even Binuji also said the cash flow is something which is most important the funds which are held up from the government side a lot of people here do government events the payment from the government has always been slow it's never on time Unless the government realizes at least this point and, you know, releases the payments which are due to the service providers, that shall really be a breather for us for at least the time being. Same case comes next to the organizers. You know, what we can support with the support that we can expect from the organizers is at least clear the pending dues and if they can support the service providers by paying advances for the forthcoming shows, that will also help us and on the other hand, it will also help the service provider. You know, we will have that thing, you know, the, the organizer has supported us by paying in advance and we will be more than uh, be happy to support that organizer first rather than the any other business coming ahead. That's it from Sonia. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. This question, uh, thank you for giving us a perspective. Now, the second question, which is, I think, in the minds of most of the uh, people, is uh, the question is for Mr. Sethi and Mr. Binu. A lot of support staff comes from outside the cities of our shows. And how do you think we are going to reintegrate them back into the system? And so far, how is this particular segment of personal being tracked by the respective organizations? And what can be done to mitigate the impact of livelihood of the people involved in the exhibition industry and especially the daily age, uh, daily wage earners? I mean, we all know that they're coming from different cities. So the question first is for Mr. Sethi, followed by Mr. Bino. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, Sonia, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, we, uh, we don't really get affected so much by what you are asking. That is more uh, relevant with, uh, I would say, the stand, stand fitter. So I'll, I'll, in all fairness, would prefer to let Binu, Binu answer that. But in a very limited way, we do have a labor force. And most of us in the forwarding fraternity, whether we are talking All India, whether we are talking about Bangalore, Bombay, or, uh, or Delhi, anywhere, Hyderabad, uh, the, the, the labor force which is there is very concentrated in accessible areas. So we do not see a, we have not seen a situation with this migration which you are referring to, and how will we revive uh, revive back with them? Now, what we have done, even with this labor force, right? We have all of us. Uh, I know I'm aware that even my other uh, uh, for, you know forwarding uh, uh, friends have actually uh, spoken to our uh, people and have conveyed to them that look, this is temporary. This will go away. Now, they are not aware, they are not aware of what is really happening. A lot of them are just seeing doom and gloom. Now, we are more realistic. We see United Nations reports. I'm an optimist, you know, all that. So we are conveying to this segment that, look, it is not, and we are there for you. And in any case, I know that we are also, uh, some of us I know are even helping them in this time. But let's not forget one thing, uh, Sonia, that actually for the forwarding fraternity, even stand fitting, uh, maybe stand fitting, not that point, but for the forwarding, we're in a lean season. You know, when we ended in uh, in February and going into March, and so God has been kind in some ways that the forwarding fraternity has not really got affected that badly, that badly in this time period for inbound shows. For outbound shows, it's a different story. It's a washout. You know, Rupa, Interpack, you name it, they're all cancelled. So. 
it's more about giving a moral and financial support to our existing labor and we're not really got in that category of the migrant labor problem so bino would give a better answer in terms of who are really affected by that for this question thank you mr sethi mr bino over to you have to be a realist uh, in this situation you know what we are talking about is current you know it's not what, what's going to happen in the future it's about uh, people losing jobs and you know daily age uh, wage and it's not getting money it's a truth it's a reality jobs will be lost no company will be able to afford all the staff which they have been holding so there will be people will be resorting to either salary cuts or reduction in jobs and unfortunately in india there is uh, no social uh, security of any any type uh, but what i am thinking is that you know for the staff category of people i am just now not talking about the migrant labor the the in the temporary labor uh, india is still following the family system you know unlike um, uh, european countries or the americas you know people are still living in families with fa- parents you know brothers sisters etc i think that's the social security that we have right now they will be able to sustain we'll be hurt we'll lose money we'll lose lot of money and also the staff will lose money as far as uh, temporary labor is concerned what mr sethi said is correct uh, generally the labor goes back to the villages at this time point of time actually if there is an exhibition in march or april we find it difficult to get labor because they go for harvesting this is a season of rabi crops and the farm uh, the uh, this uh, labor is supposed to be in the villages at this time and they are used to not having too much job for the summer months but they come back around july august september there will be jobs there will be reduced jobs but there will be jobs and i think we will be able to sustain them they will not have surplus money they will but i don't think they will start we have already given all the dues to all the time of the workers the staff everything till march end and i think we will be able to support them and at this point of time i think that uh, that's what we should think most you know how we can support our staff and laborers who are stood uh, by us all this time thank you wonderful wonderful thank you mr vinu and i think uh, important uh, point you've made is the sustainability of livelihood uh, then the surplus which we will have but i think the question today is more of sustainability of livelihood so i think gentlemen you are doing great work and uh, also supporting uh, so called the support staff uh, there will be a huge transformation in how the organizations will now be operating post covid basically smaller structure focus on data agile work methodology agency formats etc mr sethi how do you see that within your organization and for the exhibition industry in your perspective oh my god this question is uh, is funny you go to any any forum right now everybody is saying what's going to happen right Uh, is everything going to change? Is it going to become uh, for our industry? Is it going to become virtual? No. I just made a comment right now. Our worst enemy was the internet. For 20 years, when the internet came about, we said, "Marge khatam hoge. We are going to finish. Virtual will come in." And uh, you know, Tessie, who is listening in, must have said, "Oh my God! Yes, let me get onto this area uh, completely." Then we had SARS. We had 9/11. We had so many things, and we said, "This is going to go away. It will not go away." Okay. Let's keep that in mind. face to face will remain so let's not go away from that exhibitions will be there they might come about in different forms they might you know you will change when did we think after 911 sonia you know we used to walk into an airport and uh, uh, subhash you know you know in 10 minutes before the flight we could just enter right today we go through securities and everything and we said oh my god we will die how will we do it we happened so all of that will change for the exhibition industry but it will happen exhibitions will come about give it little time now i come to your other question how will things change suddenly the whole world you know has become zoom you know and this will not go away 
So our organizational structures will change, and this applies to not just the exhibition industry, this applies to the whole world. That, in my opinion, and I'm not talking now just as a freight forwarder, our whole way of working is going to change. And it's actually, you know, I always see a silver lining. I see something good coming out of it. We will see a lot of costs uh, reduced. We will see restructuring taking place. Travel will be less. You know, we'll be more focused in terms of uh, productivity. You know, you bring 20 people up there, you know exactly who's who. You know, unless meeting, you know, I don't mean it in any, in, in any bad way. But productivity will increase. Our way of working will improve. And a lot of good will come out of this, this, terrible, this terrible time that we are going through, this terrible temporary time that we are going through. Wonderful, a wonderful statement. I think it's also important that in case we are going to reduce our travel, reduce our business visits, but I think what will be even more important to maybe once a year or every six months, meet our entire business community at trade fairs, at events, at exhibitions. I think it will become even more important. What is your view, uh, Mr. More, on this? Uh, uh, how do you see the structures being changed, even though Mr. Sethi has emphasized quite a bit already on it, but uh, in one or two lines, what is your perspective? Well, uh, most of the ideas have already been given by Sethi Sap. And uh, yes, I believe that structures will change. In fact, they are changing over a period of time, slowly. Uh, we are, we are, we are going into secondary, tertiary uh, supply systems. Earlier, people used to have all the people within themselves, they have changed over. So that transformation is happening. Uh, only thing is that now with this uh, emerging uh, emergency, uh, we need to look inwards, not only from the perspective of uh, uh, cost reduction per se, which is a standard uh, item on agenda for everybody, but also to look into how we can improve our productivity, how we can improve our efficiency in a very small organization where I belong. We are already interacting uh, with our staff on a day to day basis, uh, giving them tasks which they can perform from home, you know, data mining, identifying the uh, organizations where we could provide service for, and all those activities they are doing. So it is, we are. It's also important that we keep them busy. We have assured them that they, we will not go, uh, we will not tell anybody to go away. Whatever staff we are holding, we will be working with them. Uh, maybe there will be some constraints on work or processes. But yes, uh, the idea is that uh, there has to be some confidence building with, with the staff which you are holding. Uh, there won't be much of problem for us uh, in uh, terms of migrants because we don't have uh, that uh, issue with us. Uh, what were important to us is that to keep morale high of our people. And that's true for all small and medium enterprises that they have to remain continuous in continuous touch with their staff and employees to ensure them that yes, there is a silver lining after this and light at the end of the tunnel. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. More. Mr. Goyal, you've heard the perspective of uh, uh, the various stakeholders of the exhibition industry. How do you think, in a few words, if you can tell us, how do you think we can ensure seamless cooperation when the time comes right, when we are all out of this COVID and we get back to business? Uh, uh, how do you think we can ensure seamless cooperation? Also from your perspective, sir. Well, we have no other choice. You see, uh, we have to cooperate and work together because united we can stand, divided we'll fall. So I think it's very important that all the elements in the supply chain system right, have to work together, whether they are airlines, whether they are travel agents, whether they are hoteliers, whether they are freight forwarders, whether they are clearing agents, whether they are you know cargo agents, you see, or exporters, everyone is dependent on each other. And what I had said about the virtual uh, was more on the you know uh, lighter side. 
but actually you know all medicines and all cure uh, is available on the net but still one goes to a doctor because physical in, you see man is basically a social animal so i don't think uh, whether it's the exhibition industry or the conference industry or the travel and tourism industry you know you can see taj mahal virtually you can go and see the hotels virtually you can even go and uh, see the view from the room but ultimately you know physical interaction and physical experience to breathe the air and to you know uh, interact with people uh, is not going to stop because the society is a social society we are social animals so but yes uh, as uh, rightly said that the whole uh, you know uh, Uh, we are going to go through a paradigm shift in the way we do business you see uh, we have to think of uh, you know innovative ideas innovative ways because yes this crisis is an unprecedented crisis if we are not able to find a solution we don't know how we are going to pay the salaries right right now we are uh, paying the salaries then we ask for salary cuts and ultimately if uh, the sources or if the money has which has completely dried up income doesn't start we'll have to you know think of uh, you know uh, leave without pay and ultimately laying off people because uh, where do we pay them from so ultimately you see we have to help each other for example we were uh, doing uh, we have a charter company known as air charters stick air charters division now we have started cargo charters and we are operating 24/7 because we all have to think out of the box you see we were totally dependent on passenger business now we are thinking of uh, you know uh, uh, even uh, uh, the other day we were having uh, on uh, you see uh, uh, our uh, senior managers uh, uh meet meeting on zoom and we decided we have to go into uh, you know mice uh, and we have to start a division for mice and events because we all need to diversify we all need to utilize i am telling my you know outbound operators that you must start inbound tours you must start conferences rather than thinking of uh, you know uh, conferences and weddings abroad think of weddings in indian hotels think of conferences and events in indian hotels so we all need to support each other we all need to help each other and we all need to think not only as a uh, mice industry or exhibition industry or conference industry or you know uh, we have to all think as we are all in, in it together we are all interdependent with each other we all need to think as a community as a family and as a nation if uh, we are all in the same boat and we have to see to it that the boat survives that india as a country survives and india comes out of it as fast as possible so i think what uh, some of our friends are doing is giving a list uh, to you know all the uh, you know governments that this is the facility that we have that is something very good that we are doing and in our own humble way in our own little way we are helping social organizations in uh, feeding the poor you know uh, what the gurdwaras are doing is unbelievable you know and uh, we have been uh, as an institution supporting or regularly contributing to our area gurdwara but now we've doubled or tripled the uh, amount because more people need to be fed so what i'm saying is that we all have to do both the things simultaneously we have to do whatever little charity we can do we have to take care of the poorest of the poor at the same time we have to see that we survive our cash flow doesn't stop because it is very easy to give fish every day to people but we need them to teach people how to fish so we need to make people entrepreneurs perfect um, thank you mr goyal uh, just one uh, last question uh, we have already overshot the time which was uh, kind of very interesting also and uh, so one last question to all the panelists and i would like you to say what is your biggest worry for the next 6 months 
and what is your mantra of survival of future not just 6 months so i start with uh, dharam first of all very quickly thank you sonia ji so the mantra is uh, believe in yourself we know we will come out of this problem for sure yes it's going to be a hard work time for us but yes we will come out stay with your team i would say hold on to them they have hold up on to you for so long and because of them you are at this position today so be with them at this hard time god is great and we are hoping for the best out of it thank you uh, mr more well uh, the only problem which we foresee is cash flow uh, to survive for the next 6 months mantra is threefold uh remain connected with your stakeholders whether they are your uh, uh, clients whether they are your vendors or whether internally you are employees continue continue with uh, communication don't don't break the communication link try to instill confidence in them that whenever the situation changes uh, you are there to uh, rise to the occasion occasion and uh, deliver so that is what uh, Uh, i feel would be uh, most appropriate and we all will go tide over this and go further cooperating each other thank you mr binu uh be positive believe in self self believe in your team uh sony i will take uh, just one more minute i want to show a book to you uh can you read it the black swan yeah so this talk about you know uh, events which which is not in our control and which it may happen at any time you know this is a black swan event we cannot predict it what will be happening the next time what will happen but when all this happen is there's only one way to face it you know face the reality and go forward so i would like everybody to read this book thank you thank you very much mr goel to say is that we need to build in a insurance system for our industry so that uh, when uh, you know the survival i think by god's grace we'll all survive but after survival uh, we have to think of revival and if such a thing happens uh, again we are not uh, caught unaware so both uh, for the airlines also if airlines go bankrupt the travel agents tour operators and even the uh, exhibition organizers who have paid the airlines in advance their money goes down the drain and a lot of airlines are going to go bankrupt now uh, similarly when uh, big companies like uh, uh, cox and kings and thomas cook went uh, bankrupt uh, a lot of people lost money so we must have our civil aviation ministry and our tourism ministry and i am saying this in the tourism board also that we must uh, build in and in the exhibition industry jointly with fio which is uh, i've been uh, you know associated with fio as the chairman of the services sector we need to have uh, you know uh, uh, with commerce and fio we need to have for the freight forwarders for the cargo agents for the logistic industry and for the uh, you know mice and agents some sort of an insurance policy we may it will take time for the country for social security but as an industry we need to get together we need to think of covering ourselves up without depending on any government you see so that in the hour of crisis whatever we have contributed in the insurance we can get back uh, for our cash flows and to pay the salary to our staff and also to give them medical benefits thank you very valid point thank you very much mr goel now the last word and always the final word goes to our international ambassador mr sethi so mr sethi what is your worry for the next 6 months and the mantra thank you thank you sonia and you know before i just end off thank you so much to my really really noble noble fellow panelists you've all been brilliant my topmost worry you know i said for the forwarding industry we were in our lean period right so god was kind on us but having said that for the forwarding industry and for the others our q3 and q4 more q4 of last year last year our top top concern is that our payments getting delayed 
by the exhibitors, right? If that happens, we will be in a very, very critical, critical cash flow crunch. So it's really what we expect payments to come in, not only from the exhibitors, but also from our global partners. And I can tell you something, and I'm sure my fellow forwarders uh, listening in will say, so far it's all going very good, but let's just pray that it remains that way. So that's my top concern to keep our cash flow crunch alive. It, it, it doesn't become a cash flow crunch. Now to your second question, and I have to get a little philosophical over here. That you know, we've all talked about being together. We've all talked about being with each other. I saw a lovely chat over here that in the forwarding, we should not now compete with each other. We should be together. All agreed. My global association, Ayala, you know, they carried out, they're carrying out such a beautiful campaign, Together Strong. You know, you might have seen all of this. Amazing. Elizabeth, God bless you. Now, my mantra for let us not make this survival by cooperation, which we are all talking about. Let us not, over a period of time, make this survival by cooperation turn into a survival for the fittest. Please, let, let not that happen. Let us cooperate and let us keep this in mind. Things might get tough in the coming days. Let's be realistic. Let us just keep thinking of that. The mantra is survival by cooperation and not survival for the fittest. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sethi. Uh, it's been a very, very lively session. I would like to end it. I know there are several questions which are popping up, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do not have much time. I already from a very, very important master session. So we will take all the questions off time, but I will end it by saying that it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. So I think it's very important uh, that we all have to um, uh, come forward and uh, not fear the, the change which is coming uh, right in front of us. And we just need to adapt ourselves to the new chain. I'm very sure we are, uh, we are an industry of people and people matter. And we are all, as you said, social animals, which means exhibition business will never die because we are the ones who are connecting people to people. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you very much, all the panelists. Uh, so uh, I now uh, ask Matthew, uh, sorry, Matthew uh, the uh, founding director of MMB Consulting, uh, taking the master session, very important session, exhibition survival guide. So thank you very much for joining us and also being part of the morning session. And uh, we are all very much looking forward to your session now, and I'm sure there will be several questions. So Nidhi, I uh, give it to you now to take it forward with Matthias.